Hi, I'm Tom Mastriani, host of Wine and Dine with Mastro. Welcome to the show. Today we're going to be doing a lasagna and we're going to be pairing it with some three really great wines from Italy. So, join me. Welcome back. We're going to pick our first wine. So let's go over to the rack and we'll pull this. It's Veneto and it is an Italian wine. This is from one of my favorite regions because the people there are awesome. It's really, really nice. All right, this particular wine is made with Corvina grapes, which are not too common. Hmm, smells pretty good. This should be a full bodied red. Northern Italy, look at that color. That is crazy red. That is a deep, deep ruby red. I can smell it from here. Oh, mocha right off the top. Wow. That's really nice. Big cherries. It's like cherries dipped in dark chocolate. Wow. Tastes just as good. Ooh, tannins are tight. The tannins come from the skins and the stems, and that'll, um, it's like an astringent, and that'll pull, it, you'll feel it pull on the sides of your cheeks, and it'll tighten up on your tongue, so it kind of dries out your tongue. But that's, that's a good thing. That'll usually stabilize a wine, let it age a little bit longer. That's really good. All right, now we're gonna start with the noodles. So we've got our pot of boiling water and we're gonna put about, about 15 noodles, 16 noodles in there. And then we're using the, the regular noodles. You can use the, I guess I would call them the instant noodles. I like using the traditional noodles. Now you don't wanna cook them all the way, you just wanna cook them just partially so that they, uh, so they get soft so you can maneuver them around. All right, I'm gonna let those cook for about maybe five minutes. And we're gonna take them out, we're gonna lay them out in the pot. So, one thing I noticed about this, since the tannins are so tight, what we're gonna do, we're gonna decant it. And what decanting is, decanting will air out the wine a little bit more. So, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this wine, we have it here, not decanted, but it's, it's already out but we're gonna do a violent decanting. So we're gonna pour this into a decanter, and this will, will let more air into the wine, and the wine will open up and give off all its aromas and flavors. You can decant it mildly, you can decant it violently, or if you're really in a rush, you can drop it in a blender and, and just run the blender for a second or two. That'll decant it very quickly. Now, what will happen is the wine will change flavors pretty quickly. And decanters come in all different sizes. And usually they're big and flat, much bigger area for air to, to get into the wine. See here, it's not as much, but still, this is made to funnel the aromas into the nose of the glass. Whereas this, it's just airing the wine and you're putting bubbles into it do a blind taste test. So this is the aerated wine, this is the non-aerated. So let's go with non-aerated first. Tight tannins for sure. Mm. My mouth's completely dried out. My throat's getting dry. Yes, the aromas. Still there. A lot different though. Not as sweet. It's a lot sweeter here. Flavor is much better here. A little less tannin. More cherry flavor here. Here you're not the cherry is not as present yet. But give it a little bit. It will um, the flavor will get to the same point at some point. 
probably about 20 minutes, half hour, this will catch up to this. But the more you aerate it, the better it'll taste, or well, the more natural it'll taste for what's in the bottle. Hi, I'm Tom Mastriani. I'm the host of Wine and Dine with Mastro with Food and Magic Meat. Join me as we explore deep inside the bottle to uncover the secrets that await. We'll be pairing great food with great wines, some familiar foods and some unfamiliar foods. So look forward to seeing you. We can learn about some of these great wines. See you on Wine and Dine with Mastro with Food and Magic Meat. Cheers. Perfect. Nice and softened up. We're going to pull these out. Just enough to move them around. Remember, always pour away from yourself. All right, so we're going to take our olive oil. I'm going to drop it into the pot. That's heating up. We're gonna get our onions and garlic. Chop this up the usual way. We're gonna dice it into some relatively small pieces. This time we're gonna, we're gonna cut the end, lay it flat. Now, one thing you can do with the onion, you can always put it in water afterwards, and then that will remove some of the acid that'll get into your eyes. And, Burn you. So we got our onions chopped up, now we're going to go for our garlic. Gotta love garlic. It's just my favorite thing. You can add it to pretty much anything. Kind of like luger sauce. No matter what you put luger sauce with, it's going to be good. The, um, the actual waiters will come over and tell you, yeah, put the luger sauce on the on the steak, put it on the potatoes, put it on the cheesecake, put it on everything. We actually have a local farm here where they actually go outside and they pray over the garlic and all the crops. All right, let's throw this into the oil. This is gonna be a pretty chunky sauce. We're gonna need some salt and pepper in here also. Salt. We're gonna get the big pepper. We're gonna let these cook down. And while those are cooking, we'll open up another bottle of wine. Now let's open up another wine. Our next contestant is another Italian wine. This is Il Frucchiato, okay? This means the burned, okay? Tenuta Gado Altasso, 2016 Il Brucato from Bulgaria. All right, this particular wine from Bulgaria it's a fairly new Appalachian. Mm. When they call it the burnt, that's because of the color of the grapes themselves. Oh, that's an intense red, really bright. Bright, not incredibly clear, but uh, it's really nice. The U around the edges is, is almost, like, almost like a burnt red. Cherries, I'd say a little bit of uh, leather. Velvety, I'd say we got blackberry. Almost has a hint of like a rummish flavor. That's interesting. Really nice, smooth. The tannins are still pretty big. Not as big as the Veneto, but definitely big. 
I would say we could decant this also. You can decant pretty much every wine. It's just how quickly do you want to drink it. If you want to drink it soon, you would decant it, let it air out quicker, and it'll open up. If you have time to wait, when you want to open it, let it sit out, then you don't necessarily have to decant it. You can just leave it, leave the bottle open. Also, one thing you can do, if you don't have a decanter, you can always put your finger on the bottle, and shake it. And that'll help it to air out also. But just be careful, because it will ruin a shirt or two. Mm. You can just pull all those aromas out, so they're, they're filling the, the sphere uh, or the globe. Nice. Very nice. Going to clean up a little bit, and then we're going to start with our meats. All right, let's check on our onions. Oh yeah, they're done. Now we're going to put the meat in. Let's put the pork, the sausage, the hot sausage, and the chopped meat. We're going to break these up. I'm going to add a little of one of those red wines. Actually, maybe I'll add two of them, just to be fair. So we'll get the sauce in there. And we're gonna add our tomato paste, our Italian seasonings, it's oregano parsley. Some paste. There's about four ounces of paste there. And we're gonna put in some fresh basil. I'm gonna slice that up. Now, this particular spoon is made of bamboo, but imagine if it was made of oak, French or American oak. Kind of like when they, uh, when you put wine in a cask, you've got American oak and French oak, and those different flavored woods give the oakiness to the to the wine. Let's roll this up, chiffonade style. We're gonna save some of this for later as garnish. But for now, we definitely need some of this. Ah, the aromas of this. That peppery oregano flavor is just great. So that's going in there. Nice. Mix that in. Took this open doors helicopter ride over the volcano, and this is exactly what it looked like. We went in sideways, kind of tilted, and we kind of flew around this way. All you saw was the lava just bubbling up. Very cool. Highly recommend. Hi, I'm Tom Mastriani from Wine and Dime with Mastro, where food and magic meet. Join me as I demystify the secrets of wine. I'm going to expose all the different flavors, styles, and types, and I'm going to show you how to pair it with all the different types of food. So this way, when you go to select a wine, you can look at it and say, hey, this will go with this. It's not just a white with fish and a red with meat. We're going to break it down into all the different types of wine. Join me on Optimum Channel One each week for a new episode. Salute. All right, welcome back. What we're going to do now is we're going to put this in the oven, let this cook a little longer. We have the oven set at about 350. I always cook my sauce in the oven this way. You don't have to stir it as much. It's going to cook evenly all around. So you don't have to worry about stirring it all the time. And it can't burn, can't burn. You leave it at 350 all day long. All right, my next wine. San Felice Chianti Classico. This is a typical wine of Italy, very typical wine of Italy. And San Felice, they do a very nice job of making Chiantis. So let's uh, open this one up, see how this year fared. 
Each year, depending on the climate, if, the, if it's a rainy season, the grapes are going to get really plump and watery, so it's going to water down. If the grapes are, if the land is dry or drier with the climate, the grapes will be smaller, more condensed. They'll still have that juice in there, but per the amount of liquid, the denser the wine is going to be. So uh, farmers, towards the end of the season, they want to pick at just the right time before they get into a rainy season or it rains for the last time in the season. If they pick it right before that, they're golden. If they pick it after it rains, the grapes are going to plump up and get too much water. And if it's a rainy season, the whole season it's just not really a good year. This is a, all Chiantis are made from a Sangiovese wine or grape. The alcohol seems a little high on this. Let's look at the legs clear indicator. Yeah, see, look at the hang time. Look at the legs. That's probably 14, 14 and a half maybe. Let's taste and find out. Definitely had to get some air in there. It's really hot, but it's good. It's balanced. The, the alcohol level is a little too forward, but it's not bad. This probably really has to decant for a little while also. All three of these wines could definitely use a little time out in the air. We should go, go to the park, walk around for a while before we drink them. All right, while that's airing out, we're gonna make a bechamel sauce to go with the lasagna. And what bechamel is, is basically, it's, it's a milk, flour, and butter. And we're gonna heat these up in a pan or a pot. We got about three quarters stick of butter and we're gonna whisk in some flour and some milk. And then that's gonna make like a, a creamy sauce, a creamy buttery sauce that we're gonna turn in with the ricotta and the cheeses as we put it, layer it, okay? And it'll help us with the ricotta to lay it out. So it'll be smooth, creamier, much easier to maneuver. All right, so now our butter's melted. So now to make our bechamel, I'm gonna add in some flour, whisk it in. Now whenever you mix butter or fat with flour, you're gonna get a roux. And then by adding the milk on top, and then this'll thicken as it. All right, so now, Got a really nice, thick bechamel sauce. So we're gonna let this cool a little bit and then we're gonna add our regatta cheese to this and that'll give it a nice consistency. It'll be much easier to spread. Creamy goodness. So now this is something completely different by adding this to this. Now we got that butteriness and mixed with the creamy milkiness of the ricotta cheese. It's gonna make for a great layer in the lasagna. And it's gonna be very easy to assemble. Because when you have this clumpy ricotta cheese, you gotta move it around and get it around all the, uh, the noodles. It's just no fun. And we're gonna get the sauce that bubbling away. All right, so now we'll need a ladle. Let's grab this. And we're gonna lay out some sauce on the bottom. Not a very thick layer, but just enough to coat the bottom. Our noodles. And we're gonna layer them in the pan and slightly overlap them. And you could use the, uh, the pre-made noodles, but I find the flavor is just not the same. Texture is not the same. You don't have these cool little edges. We're gonna need a spoon so we can spoon on this bechamel sauce. 
whisk out of here. Leave that there. Now you notice it's nice and creamy now. Very easy to spread. Those noodles, they'll get all pushed around. Don't want to get too close to the edge like I just did there. You want to keep it more towards the middle. Right. Now we're going to put some mozzarella on here. Got this big bowl of mozzarella. We're going to go pretty generous here. Anything that's pre-grated has a chemical on it, which will form it, you know, stops it from clumping. But if you grate it freshly, you won't have to worry about clumping. Parmesan. So now we've got that cheese there, and we're gonna do another layer of chunky meat sauce on top. It doesn't have to be too wet. I can't wait to taste this, it smells incredible. All right, so now we're gonna put another layer of noodles. Slightly overlapping. Now, a little more bechamel. The flavors and the aromas are the actual aromas. If you took a molecule of how a, uh, a lemon smells, and then you took the molecule of a how say a Pinot Grigio is with a, a lemony flavor at the end. Those molecules at one point are almost identical. So you're kind of getting those flavors out of the wine at the same time. Put a little bit more cheese on top. We'll throw a little fresh basil. Mm. Then we're gonna bake this in the oven. Then we're gonna do a quick broil just to brown the top. Now some people like to cover it. Uh, in this case, I'm not gonna cover it. I'm gonna leave it as it is. And this way the top will get really brown. All right, we have the oven at 350. Look, it's smoking right now, you see that? Yeah, it's from the sauce. Put that in there. On my show, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simplify wine. You're gonna know why the color's a certain way, what the legs are, the smells, the aromas, and the flavors that come from it. So I'm gonna explain that all to you in very easy to understand ways so that you can just go and pair all the wines for yourself with any kind of great dish. Whatever you prepare, I'm gonna help you to prepare it with a great wine. So join me each week as we delve into the mystical world of wine, and I'll demystify it for you. All right. So that lasagna is ready. We're gonna pull it out of the oven. It's been sitting in here for about an hour at about 350 degrees. So let's check it out. Ooh. All right, oh, look at that. That's crazy. Look at that. Oh, that's crazy good. Is that beautiful and what? That is spectacular looking. Mm. Looks really good. All right, so now what we gotta do is plate this and we'll pair it with our wines. Ooh, that's a mushy mess. Now you should let this cool a little bit. Yeah, it's very, very hot right now. Definitely need it to cool. All right, so this really should cool a little bit, but right now we're gonna dig into it anyway. And remember, since it is a bechamel sauce that we put in there, it's gonna be a little wet. So I'm gonna make sure that it, we're separated. Let's see what it looks like. Oh yeah, that's a wet mess. All right, let me grab a fork. We're gonna garnish this a little bit. my palate ready with that. And I know this is gonna be really hot, so. Mm. 
killer tasty. Mm. Wow, that's really good. The creaminess of it is, is off the hook. I mean, lasagna, I've never had a lasagna so creamy as it is with the bechamel. All right, let's try this one. It pairs very nicely, really nice. Good finish. The, there's a little higher acidity in this, so I'm feeling that at the end. Let's try the next wine. So. Mm. That is really good. Take one more bite. Mm. Lasagna is usually a whole day affair, and this has taken quite some time, so I'm pretty hungry right now, too, waiting for this. Mm. Really good. That pairs really nicely also, and it uh, just finishes off well. Let's just try one bite. Oh, yeah. This is beyond good. Let's try it with the next wine, the Chianti Classico. Good initially. Mid palate's going to be a little harsh, and followed by a decent finish. Short finish on the wine, long finish on the uh, on the pasta. So we're just going to have to go back now, retrace our steps, and see who's best. Go back to the Veneto. Smooth, acidic, short finish also, but comparable to the finish of the of the pasta. So I'd say this one has pulled ahead a little bit. Let's try this one next. Cleans up really nice. Hands down, the winner is the Veneto. Second up is Il Brucchiato. And the third is the Chianti Classico San Felipe. We had a beautiful, beautiful lasagna that's just spectacular with bechamel sauce. Thanks for joining me. I'm Tom Mastriani. This is Wine and Diamond Mastro with Food and Magic Meat. Follow me on my website at mastrotv.com where you can see more great wines, more great recipes, and you can follow me on Instagram. Thanks for joining. Salute.